As the future of British tennis now looks more promising, the health of English cricket continues to give cause for concern. The summer visits of India and Pakistan tested England to the full, but the World Cup winter that had gone before offered little in terms of celebration or optimism. There was much for Mike Atherton to ponder as England began the year by losing the Test Series 1-0 in South Africa. Manager Ray Ellingworth tried to raise spirits in the camp after a 6-1 drubbing in the one-day series, but his public skirmish with Devon Malcolm didn't help matters. The headline writers were certainly kept busy. England were one of a record 12 nations who gathered for the World Cup on the Asian subcontinent. But the story got no better for England. Their only wins came against Holland and the United Arab Emirates. Sri Lanka put them out of their misery in the quarterfinals. And that is the 236 that Sri Lanka was seeking. And what a comprehensive victory. We are bad, we played bad, and we're out of the competition. <laughs> it was an uncomfortable journey home for Atherton and England. The shock of this, or any other World Cup, came when Kenya beat the once mighty West Indies, who were dismissed for a mere 93. Sri Lanka reached the final when the volatile Calcutta crowd brought an early end to their semi. A seven-wicket win in the final over favourites Australia completed a hugely deserved victory for Sri Lanka and their talented batsmen, brilliantly led by Arjuna Ranatunga. Back home and it was all changed for England selectors and a new coach in David Lloyd. India provided the first challenge of the summer. England's dressing room demanded a return to winning ways and with help from a resurgent Chris Lewis, the Texaco trophy was secured. In the opening test at Edmiston, Nasser Hussain scored his first test century. Dominic Cork then took over to give England an eight wicket victory. As one bird looked on, another bowed out. Lord saw Dickie Bird's farewell to Test cricket. I'll miss the buzz, I'll miss the atmosphere of Test match cricket because to me, you can have the Olympic Games, you can have Wimbledon, you can have the World Cup of football and cricket, but Test match day at Lords, there's nothing in the sporting calendar to compete with that man. But one star which might be rising is that of Indian batsman Saurav Ganguly, who scored 200s in his first two Tests. There were hundreds for Sachin Tendulkar and Mike Atherton as the third test was drawn, so giving the series to England. Another Hussein 100 meant he won the Man of the Series award, but a broken finger put him out of the first test against Pakistan. There was, however, an increased mood of optimism, but Ray Illingworth couldn't lose sight of the fact that Pakistan would provide much sterner opposition. Lords played host to the first test, and Inzimam ul Haq set Pakistan on their way to victory with a stylish century. The wiles of leg spinner Mushtaq Ahmed then sparked that all too familiar occurrence. <laughs> and England collapse. The sheer pace of Waka Yunis finished things off. There was better English news at Headingley with 170 for Alex Stewart and the first test ton for Nick Knight. But in a match dominated by the bat, any chance of victory was to elude England. The third test at the Oval saw John Crawley become another English centurion. But again it was Mushtaq who took control. The mats and the series were won and it all ended on a very fitting note. That's it. 300 test wickets for Wadi Macron. Two successive Nick Knight hundreds meant England did at least win the Texaco trophy. On the domestic front, Lancashire made Lords their second home, beating Northants in the B&H final. And in the Nat West final, Glen Chapel 6 for 18 saw Essex fold out for a record low, just 57 all out. Surrey sneaked home in the Sunday League. It was their first trophy since 1982. They were also in contention in one of the closest championship races for years, but inspired by Phil Simmons, Leicestershire, led by James Whittaker, took the title for only the second time in their history. <laughs> 1996, well, it's been a difficult year for Mike Atherton. No doubt he'll be hoping for better fortune on England's current tour of Zimbabwe.
Well, it's not started too well, that's for sure. They lost the first one day international today in Bulawayo. They're missing you, Dickie, that's for sure. <laughs> um, what advice can you provide? Well, I think we'll win the test series, but uh, it's a bad start. And uh, I don't think we've got the ballers around in England today. If to, if to win test matches, you've got to blast sides out twice. It's as simple as that. And uh, I think we've got to make ourselves mentally strong like the Australians. They play it the right way. Whatever walk of life you're in, Steve, whatever game you're playing, whatever sport you're in, if you're not mentally strong, it's so important to be right up there. If you're not mentally strong, you'll fall by the wayside. Well, you, you, can have, you can have all the ability in the world, but you'll fall by the you've wayside. You've always been their strongest supporter, Dickie. <laughs> Happy retirement, semi-retirement. Well, I'll have another season left on the county circuit, and then I'll be 65, and then they pension me off. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> What a nice prospect. I've Dickie Bird, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> He'll go on for hours. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. In racing this year.